Low doses tends to be an antioxidant effect. High doses tend to be a pro-oxidant effect. So you might say, well, pro-oxidant sounds maybe unhealthy. Why would I be doing that? Well, hey, it's Dr. Ray. Welcome to the YouTube channel. And I talk about all things integrative and other types of medical interventions. Today, we're going to talk about intravenous vitamin C, one of my favorite topics. We got tons of questions. So one of the questions that we got was, what is the difference between a regular dose and a high dose of intravenous vitamin C? Well, high dose vitamin C and vitamin C in general is a very useful type of a treatment in many types of settings, but there have been some controversies or questions or other things around it. So I want to get into just a few things on this topic. We have a playlist that we'll link down below. I want to talk about the differences between intravenous vitamin C that might be given at a, let's say, regular dose or low dose and that of a high dose and what makes it different. Now, the first thing is terminology-wise. I'm going to use our standard terms that we might use in infections or in the world of oncology, integrative oncology, for high-dose vitamin C. And the reason I say that is during COVID, there were publications talking about the use of quote-unquote high-dose vitamin C in hospitalized COVID patients. And we have some other videos on that. But that high dose was not really high dose as we see it in the world, especially of oncology and acute infectious disease at least. So what we're going to first do is look at what makes oral vitamin C and IV vitamin C different. And then we'll talk about IV vitamin C and how the doses kind of break down and what the difference is for them. The first thing is, is that you can certainly take vitamin C orally in pills or powders or liquids. You can eat it in food. That's how you should be getting it. And vitamin C has a limit to how much you absorb orally. Now, that limit can be quite broad. People who are really used to taking vitamin C may have a higher uh, limit than other people do, but the main limitation normally is that too much vitamin C can cause loose stools or diarrhea, and that's when you know you're not absorbing it anymore. When you put it in someone's vein, you're going around the digestive tract, and so that person now with the intravenous vitamin C no longer is going to have the GI issues where they're going to get, say, loose stools, etc., but the blood is going to get the vitamin C directly. So there's no digesting or absorbing of it. So this topic that I wanted to answer the question of what's high and low dose is about intravenous vitamin C. So we talk about oral vitamin C on uh, other YouTube videos, and you can check those out. So once we get it into the vein, there is a range of doses that can be used. So a thousand milligrams is one gram. It is very, very common in multivitamin type IV therapy to have one, two, three, four, five grams. So 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C in those IVs. And then there are even strategies that might go to 7,000 or 10,000 milligrams or 7 to 10 grams, etc. All of those are considered in the normal dose or low dose vitamin C range. And then there's kind of a skip, if you look at the research, over to doses that are around 25 grams and 50 grams and 75 and 100, so higher than 25 grams, and those are normally considered quote-unquote high dose. Now, one of the reasons why some of the COVID papers that got published were looking at what they called high dose vitamin C is, is that they were giving a gram every hour. So in 24 hours, that would be 24 grams, which puts you into that high dose category. Students will often ask, well, what happens in the middle? You know, what if it's 15 grams or 20 grams? You know, where, where is the dividing line? Well, the dividing line is a bit arbitrary because a lot of it has to do with your metabolism and your body size. So if we are treating a child, we use pediatric dosing strategies that adjust the dose down. And so high dose for a child is going to be very, very different than high dose for a smaller adult, which is going to be very different from high dose for a larger adult like myself. So to get a high dose, I might need more than a smaller person would, for example. So that's why there's this range, and it actually breaks down into a body weight adjusted dose, but we don't really need to get into that. 
So you can usually consider a low number, single digits, low double digits. So, you know, one to 10 grams, 10 to 15 grams are still considered low dose. 25 or so grams and higher are generally considered high dose. Well, if I'm putting it in the vein, what, why would I care how much I'm putting in? Well, there's a difference in the biology and the biochemistry of the vitamin C at lower doses. At lower doses, it's going to mainly function as what it normally does, an antioxidant. So our cells are going to take it up and use it as one of the primary antioxidants, which vitamin C is. So we have that, right? When we get to higher doses, so let's say in the average adult, we're somewhere 25, 50, 75 grams, you know, bigger doses. When you hit a certain point, you start to overwhelm the elimination of the vitamin C. And so the blood levels stay higher. When that happens at higher doses, you have what's called an oxidative effect. Now, it's not quite that simple, but that's the bottom line if you want to really get it down to the simplest terms. Low doses tends to be an antioxidant effect. High doses tend to be a pro-oxidant effect. So you might say, well, pro-oxidant sounds maybe unhealthy. Why would I be doing that? Well, the reason we might use a pro-oxidative dose or something right on the line there would be, as we said, maybe an acute or chronic infectious case possibly to support somebody during cancer, where a pro-oxidant uh, approach might be synergistic with the other therapies they're having or may help their immune system generally dealing with cancer, et cetera. So if we're looking for an oxidative effect, we at least need high dose for part of that. If we're looking for a supportive antioxidant effect, we use lower doses for that. The next question related to this was that a person had written in and uh, the team picked up the question and they said, so I've seen research that talks about low dose versus high dose intravenous vitamin C in cancer patients. Can you explain why they would be used differently? Well, there's a number of reasons why you might do low dose versus high dose with cancer patients. The low dose literature, there's a handful of papers, really. It's not like there's, you know, hundreds of papers on this, but there's a handful of papers, low dose, meaning somewhere between 7, 10, 12 grams, low fairly low dose. So 7,000 to 10,000 milligrams, which is fairly low dose for IV. Those are all looking at quality of life improvement in a patient with cancer, usually advanced cancer. And so in many people where their goals are to help with their general quality of life, et cetera, and maybe they have other reasons they can't get high dose vitamin C, lower dose strategies have been shown in the research to still be beneficial to overall quality of life. So what is quality of life? They include different scales to use for this, but it could be things like, are you sleeping well? What are your pain levels like? Are you able to be, you know, conscious and present with your loved ones? Are you able to be mobile to the degree that you physically can be mobile? Things like that are quality of life measures. So vitamin C at low dose is often used to improve quality of life. At high dose, the research generally, and again, these are in the oxidative ranges, high dose vitamin C is more along the lines of trying to help the immune system irritate and aggravate the cancer cells proper, and so that the immune system has an easier time dealing with and seeing the cancer cells, et cetera. So higher doses are considered kind of anti-cancer, quote unquote, and they have a role there. So things to consider around that are, is it safe to do these things? Well, the first thing is you want to make sure that you have a provider who is doing intravenous therapies under the laws and rules of wherever it is that you live. So here in the U.S., we have particular rules that are, you know, enforced by the federal and state governments, et cetera, around IV therapy. So you want to make sure whoever it is is licensed to do these things, but also has the experience to do it. The next thing is, if you're doing especially high-dose vitamin C, you need to check a few things in the labs. The first thing is uh, you would do a metabolic panel to check your kidney function because you put a high dose of vitamin C in someone, it's a temporary strain on the kidney. So if somebody has very poor kidney function, we often and will not give them a high dose of vitamin C until the kidneys rebound, etc. The next thing would be beyond the metabolic panel, looking at the kidney functions, etc., would be a G6PD enzyme test. You can be genetically deficient in that enzyme. And if you're deficient in G6PD enzyme, you are not supposed to have oxidative treatments because you can have hemolysis in your blood. Your, your red blood cells will explode and 
that would be terribly bad. So we always screen people for that enzyme deficiency. But again, if they have it, they just don't get high dose vitamin C. And then there's a few other tests that are done just to make sure it's all safe. The next thing that we are concerned about when we're giving higher doses of vitamin C is it tends to be in an IV solution that is uh, what they call hyperosmolar, a uh, high osmolarity, which can temporarily dehydrate the person. Now, there's ways to mitigate that, but if a person's already dehydrated, they can get nauseated and headaches and things like that if they get vitamin C too rapidly or if they're not hydrated ahead of of time. Most people get is drink water enough before, during, and after the vitamin C IV and they'll be fine. In some of our more frail patients, we'll actually give them hydrating fluids uh, before just to kind of get them level and then we'll move on to intravenous high-dose vitamin C. So we have labs that we check. We have physical uh, parameters and markers like dehydration, hydration status, etc. And then there's things such as how fast do we administer it and all that that are kind of technically operated based on uh, how you're doing on that particular day. The next thing is because it's often used with either in infectious disease with, say, antibiotics on board or in cancer with maybe chemotherapies and things, how does it uh, work? and play? Is it synergistic or is it, you know, uh, confrontational with these other drugs? Well, we'll do a whole topic on vitamin C and chemotherapy, but the short answer is, is that most of the research shows that vitamin C is actually synergistic with most chemotherapies. And then if you look at, as we might use vitamin C in somebody who's gotten an infectious disease, maybe chronic infection, and they might be on antibiotics, vitamin C is actually synergistic with some antibiotics and it's it's neutral with the rest of them. It they can be generally used together. Now, there are logistics to any intravenous therapy. So remember, the first thing is do it with somebody who knows what they're doing. Not only you know are they licensed and certified to do this type of IV therapy, but do they have experience with it? There's a lot of people who might do general IV therapy, like hydration services, but they're not used to managing, say, high-dose oxidative treatments like high-dose vitamin C. And it's whatever, you know, they are licensed to do and they're up to do. But we have seen in certain cases where uh, a clinic might be really good at certain IV therapy, but high dose vitamin C, they just don't normally do. It's something that there's a lot of nuance to medically. So you do want to have a clinic that's used to doing it and they can deal with how your body is on any given day there. The next question is, well, how long do I do it? Well, that totally depends why you're doing it. In general, if you're doing high dose intravenous vitamin C and you're doing it in the case of uh, support for cancer therapies. We, what we have seen in, in some research that I was involved in previously in humans, what we generally saw was if you're going to do high dose vitamin C, you usually have to do about two a week over the course of about seven to 10 weeks before you can really tell how much it's doing. If you just do one IV therapy, it's fine. It's not going to hurt you. But in order to get an effect, you need to do it over a particular amount of time. And so that means you're going to have to go in somewhere to get the IV vitamin C. You're going to be in the clinic and you're you're going to be sitting, usually drinking water and relaxing and getting your IV, but you're going to be there for a certain amount of time. And depending on the dose, it may be a little over an hour. It might be a few hours, depending on how high the dose is, how big you are, how hydrated you are, and what your tolerance is. So there are some logistical things around it as well. You just want to make sure that you find a clinic that's going to do the proper pre-testing and is used to doing high-dose vitamin C, not just IVs in general, and has experience with managing the potential side effects and, and individualities that we all have around needing high-dose vitamin C or how we tolerate it, etc. All right. Well, I hope that answers the questions that we got it around high versus low-dose vitamin C. Probably talk about low-dose specifically in other uh, settings, but remember, low-dose is usually a single-digit number of grams, maybe small double digits. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five grams, maybe up to 10, 15 grams. High-dose is usually considered about 25 or higher, and uh, that can be divided up in a number of different ways, depending on whether it's in a hospital or in an outpatient setting. All right. I'm Dr. A. You can go take a look at our vitamin C playlist on the YouTube channel. You can take a look. We're going to link some other things here, and I will see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.